So I got this uh, Anycubic Mega S printer. Um, I'm actually pulling the front half of the box off just so that you can get a better view of the unpacking and uh, what it all looks like. So here we go. Nice uh, packaging actually. It's not that crappy styrofoam that gets everywhere. Um, turns out that we've got a roll of filament here. Um, so here is the gantry section all assembled and everything. It looks like it's going to be eight screws total to get this thing together and uh, to get it printing. So that's kind of cool. Not much assembly required. Put this aside for a second. Um, so, here's some more filament for us to try out. A couple of different colors. That's five, five different colors, 10 meters it says of each. Looks like we have a goodie bag here, so I'm gonna go through that really quick. All right, so we'll spatula to get everything removed pretty easily. Um, extra nozzles, cleaning stuff, uh, a couple little tools. We've got the little, the little um, needles to clean the tips, some extra tips. Interestingly, an extra little um, uh, limit switch in there as well. Not sure where that goes, but we'll figure it out. Fully assembled extra hot end, a USB to SD card um, adapter, and an SD card. I'm not sure who makes this or how big, but I'm sure we'll figure that part out as well. Of course, our power cord, uh, some tweezers, and our assembly screws and Allen wrench is what's left in there. So this is, just to clear it up too, this is actually, um, this was a used, it was labeled as a used good condition printer on Amazon for a fraction of the price of the new one. So I picked it up as soon as I saw it without even hesitating. Um, that's why some of the stuff doesn't look like it, it, it might when you, when you buy it brand new as far as, you know, the wire being all um, like that. So continuing on couple little little wire cutter here and all these extra tools by themselves would cost you a decent amount of money but it's nice that they're included and here is the base section so I want to try to do this without destroying anything because it is well packaged in there Let's see. Yes, um, I'm gonna run through putting this together which i'm guessing is actually going to be super simple um we'll, we'll just do it right now why why wait get it out of the way so it's pretty straightforward you can tell the uh the base section is going to sit right here in the little gantry section four screws on either end and that's pretty much all the assembly that you have to do Obviously, plug a couple of wires in, but all those are different sizes and color coded on the side over here. So let me give you a quick view of that as well. That's where they go, so you can't really go wrong on those. Um, On-off switch and powers on the side over there, along with voltage selector, USB and SD card reader over on this side. So to put it all together, fairly straightforward. I'll drop that section into this section over here, making sure that we're squared up and we can obviously slide this forward so that we can get our screw holes lined up. And it's just a matter of popping in a few screws on either side. 
One thing to note, and I wish all 3D printer manufacturers included these type of wrenches, the ball end wrench. It's a lot easier to work with. You can, um, obviously you could still tighten your screws even at an angle, whereas with a straight wrench, you're very limited and half the time you don't even have the space to work and you gotta keep removing the wrench and resetting it and it's a major pain in the butt. But these were, uh, they were kind enough to send a ball and wrench which makes assembly a lot easier. So packaged in with it were a couple of pieces of metal, a couple of screws. These are actually going to be for our filament holder. Um, it's actually a really straightforward process. A couple of screws are going to go in right there so that our filament holder looks like this. And then this whole thing is going to attach right here in the front. Loosen up a couple of screws, pop that in, and then that'll look something like that. So I'm going to do this really quick. So you'll have this little guy, we'll just loosen up these two screws right here, slide it in, and we're good to go. these things sliding out mid print so that seems like it's pretty good um, so other than that again back here uh, we just got a couple of wires to plug in to the base section one of them is clearly for the filament runout sensor which is right here the other one goes straight up to the print head and these are actually keyed connectors, so they only go in one way. Can't really mess it up. So that looks like it goes up to the print head and uh, maybe the extruder as well. And our last connectors, probably just for everything else. Various sensors, hot end, um, you know, uh, motors, and all that other stuff. So, uh, that's pretty much it. There's, you know, you, if you wanted to, you can try to, I mean, maybe zip tie a couple of, uh, put a couple of zip ties in here just to get the wiring a little bit neater looking. But at the end of the day, we don't really care about neat. We care about how this printer prints. Um, so yeah. And I also did notice that the spare, uh, if I can find it, that spare limit switch this little guy actually looks like it works on both the z-axis and the y down here um maybe also the yeah on all three axes it does seem to be workable for all of those uh so what we're gonna do i'm going to plug this thing in and you know maybe do some printing let's see what's on that sd card if there's any files i'll just go right off the bat with a little test file and see what it looks like so i uh, was just messing around with some of the controls i leveled the bed um got new filament routed in there um and it does turn out that the sd card does have some sample prints so i'm gonna try one of these and uh See how it goes.
as you can see, we've got a whole readout here with extruder temps, um, time elapsed, bed temperature, actual the actual position of the um, of the print head, and a progress indicator. So we can kind of keep a good eye on everything from here while while it's printing. Again, I'm just going to let this do its thing and then come back and let you know what the result was on a test print right out of the box. So my honest thoughts on the Anycubic Mega S. Um, it's actually a great little printer, just right out of the box. It makes great prints. You have a, uh, an average print volume, which is about eight cubic inches. Uh, print speeds are actually pretty quick as well. Um, the included accessories and extra parts are actually a huge plus. I mean, they're probably including something, probably somewhere along the lines of anywhere from $50 to $100 worth of extras that you would normally buy anyway, just because, you know, you like to have spares, nozzles, uh, little tools, cutters. All that stuff's already included. Um, there's a, um, the so this is the upgraded model, which is on Amazon. Uh, and it does include an updated um, extruder. So it does have a Titan extruder. It's not just a, or Titan style rather. It, it doesn't have the standard extruder that has typically has feeding issues and stuff, the little cheapies. Um, I mean, I can't, I can't actually find much to, to say that is negative about the printer there. It, the fans are a little bit noisy, but you know, those were actually cheap upgrades to make. I think I spent somewhere along the lines of $25 to upgrade all the fans and it's much, much, much more quiet than it was out of the box, but you know, it depends on where you're going to be using the, the printer. If you're using it in an office environment or even a spare room in the house or something, it's not much of an issue. But if you want to put it in your, um, you know, somewhere in the house where you're going to be hearing it, then the fans can be a little bit noisy. That's the one negative I see to it. Uh, other than that, everything else is actually pretty well built. Um, the prints that this printer has made just right out of the box are just as good as the prints I've been doing with another printer of mine that I've spent months tweaking and upgrading. And, you know, with this thing, it's just right out of the box. We had great prints. Uh, I think that I would definitely recommend this to anybody that's looking for a printer that has a reasonable build volume and has an extremely easy setup and again the included accessories the full full um one kilogram roll of filament is also a big plus most most um printers will come with a little sample roll or something like that but this actually had a full kilo of, of filament along with five little um samples with different colors so also a huge plus it's i mean you, you know right out of the box you're printing you you have enough filament to do a bunch of different prints uh i haven't tested certain functions um i haven't tried printing over usb or you know uh turning it off to to see the resume function on it or anything but uh judging from everything else and the build quality on everything else it seems like it's pretty uh a pretty well-made printer so i don't doubt that there's going to be uh, that those functions are going to work well as well i don't anticipate having any issues with that so yeah if you're looking for a printer that's going to be great right out of the box get you printing in pretty much no time uh go ahead and buy the anycubic mega s so definitely an overall really good buy uh, and there are plenty of uh, plenty of plenty of models on online that you can buy for little upgrades and things that you can print.
So there you have it.